just got this is a slightly different version of the scrap than the one I've got in the in the polar chenille. It's a little more clouserish, but it's still got that uh, signature kind of scrap look to him. A little pine squirrel, a little squirrel tail, and uh, might have to feature him in a, another video coming up here. Hey guys, welcome to another uh, Tim on the Fly tying video. Today we're going to tie a uh, squirrel tail scrap. This is uh, very similar to the polar chenille scrap that we tied in a previous video. But uh, this guy's going to have a little bit less flash and sparkle to him, a little bit lower profile. It's going to fish a little more like a minnow, where the polar chenille scrap was a little bulkier, kind of covered that leech sort of territory, although it could also be swam like a minnow. This one will also, in the colors we're tying it today, in this kind of crawfishy orange, you can also uh, bounce this guy along the bottom, and it's going to make a fairly good crawfish imitation too. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start out on a fire hole 839 hook. It's a uh, pretty standard streamer hook. It's a down eye streamer hook. You know, instinct would probably tell you that a uh, straight eye streamer would work better for this sort of thing. But I like the down eye because of the look of it. Kind of gives you that scrap type look. You know, if you've seen the Ice Age movies, you'll recognize that little critter. But it also seems to give the fly a little more bounce when you strip it. And especially if you're fishing as a crawfish pattern, doing kind of that crawfish hop type of retrieve, then uh, it's going to tend to give you a little bit better action. But we're going to start out with that hook. Then we're going to start out with some uh, Vivas 140 denier tan thread. And we're going to get that started on the hook. We're right there behind the eye. And we're going to go back a couple of eye lengths, trim that off. And today we're going with a uh, red lead barbell eye, but depending on the uh, color of the fly that you want, and I do these in quite a bit, quite a bit of different uh, color variations. I do it in black. I do it in chartreuse. I do it in black and chartreuse. Uh, any number of combinations will uh, do really well on this. You could also, if you uh, I'm going with the lead because I want this guy to get down a little further because in this coloration we will fish it on the bottom as a crayfish pattern. But uh, you could go also with nickel eyes if you didn't want it to drop quite so fast or if you wanted to put bigger eyes on it without adding more weight. We're just going to go ahead and set this barbell eye on here. Do it with a series of uh, cross wraps. Series of figure eight X figure X wraps, figure 8 wraps, X wraps, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to take a few horizontal wraps just to make sure that that's on there nice and tight. Kind of squeeze that all together. And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to take this thread all the way back to the bend of the hook back here. This is a barbless hook, so there is no barb, but you want to take it back to right about where the barb would be on a barbed hook. And then we're going to take a piece of uh, take a piece of pine squirrel strip, and we're going to want the tail to be about the length of the shank of the hook somewhere in there. And by that, though, I mean the total tail, not just the not just the strip part. So we're going to find a spot in there that's going to give us that nice long tail, and we're going to part that, set it down on the hook, take a couple of wraps around it with the thread, and you want to make sure that those wraps stay nice and close together because when we're done with this we want that hair to fold right back across there so that you can't hardly tell where it was tied in. And we're going to fold that, uh, we're going to fold that strip back out of the way, bring the thread around just in front of it, and then we're going to take a couple of uh, strands of root beer crystal flash. And we're going to do something a little different with this. We're going to fold this over 
like such. And we're going to take that folded over part and we're going to tie it in on the shank of the hook back here. We're going to go ahead and run that thread all the way up to the front. And this is a size 10 streamer hook, so this is a fairly small streamer. So I like the fact that the crystal flash, when we wrap it like this, and that's exactly what we're going to do, we're going to wrap that forward. I like the way it flattens out. On a bigger fly, uh, you could use a, a pearl braid or something like that that's going to have a little more bulk to it. I just like the fact that I, with the uh, crystal flash this way, I get the, uh, the sparkle without getting too much, too much bulk since we're trying to do this pattern with a little slimmer profile. We're going to trim this excess off, but we're not necessarily going to get rid of it because it's about the right size to use for another step here in a second. So we're just going to take that and we're going to put it in our tweezers there and set it aside. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that strip and fold it back over and we're going to find a part in the hair just right behind the eyes. You can see there. And then we're just going to take a few more wraps just to anchor that right behind the eyes. Again, making sure that we keep those wraps nice and close together so that that hair will fold back over itself. And then we're going to do the same right in front of the eyes and anchor that piece of, piece of pine squirrel down. And then at this point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to trim that off. We're going to I'm going to leave that little tuft to hide that little tuft of hair on there, and I'm going to use that to kind of give us a little more, a little more body above the eyes there. And then we're just going to wrap this down really good and snug. Okay, and so there's the, what will be the belly of our fly in the in the water. It's going to give it just a little bit of a depth, a little bit of that contour, kind of like a, a minnow belly or, or some sort of a bait fish if we're swimming it that way. We're going to turn this over in the vise. We're going to take a couple more wraps just to make sure we got everything, all that hair tied back out of the way there. And then we're going to come back with that uh, little piece of crystal flash that we had left over. And we're just going to tie that in about the length. We want that to be just about as long as the, the tail on the fly. So we're just going to get that in there on top. And we're going to tie that in so that that lays along. We got a little double flash there in the body of the fly and then we've got a little extension out into the into the tail. So he's got some flash to him. He just doesn't have near as much as if we were tying in a great big body of polar chenille like we did in the in the polar chenille scrap. Make sure we get that latched down there pretty good. Build a little bit of a thread ramp here. Not much because we're gonna we're gonna need some room because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna get a small tuft of squirrel. In this particular case, it's squirrel dyed orange. Uh, fox, just regular undyed fox squirrel would work really well on this particular color pattern. Or you can get uh, squirrel tail dyed in a number of different colors. You know, if you're going black or chartreuse or any of those other colors we talked about there are squirrel tails available for those and we're just going to again we're going to set that in about the same length as the uh, as the rest of the fly so that that hair goes right back to the tail and you're going to kind of see a little bit of a similarity at this point between this fly and a uh, clouser minnow and that's because there is a, a very big similarity. I very much had the Clouser minnow in mind when I was when I was tying this fly. Just wanted something with a little more action in the water, just a little more movement with a slower retrieve. So that uh, pine squirrel certainly does that. And then we're going to go ahead and tie this down, kind of smooth out our head a little bit. making sure that we leave the uh, eye of the hook clear, of course. And then we're just going to drop in a 
whip finish here. And that could be the finished fly, but what we're going to do, just to give it a little more strength, since like I said, we're using this as a, possibly using this as a crayfish pattern, so we're going to be bumping it down along the rocks and where it can get a little dinged up and damaged. So we're just going to get in here with just a little bit of uh, UV resin. Just get those thread wraps coated there. And then we'll come in with the curing light. Get that cured. And uh, other than maybe coming in here and getting a couple of loose hairs that didn't get all the way tied down, we are pretty much done. We've got our squirrel tail scrap, and we're ready to head for the water.